Hello, my name is Dr. Roger Kahn, Interim Crime Laboratory Director and Director of the Forensic Genetics Laboratory of the Harris County Institute of Forensic Sciences. Speaking on behalf of Dr. Luis Sanchez, Executive Director of the Institute and Chief Medical Examiner of Harris County, I want to welcome you to the open house celebration of the Institute's new Forensic Genetics Laboratory. This state-of-the-art facility is a testament to the high value Harris County places on forensic science that is independent, scientifically sound, and scrupulously impartial. The new laboratory gives us the ability to increase productivity and expand the range of cutting-edge DNA tests to aid in the investigation of more crimes and to assist the medical examiner in the determination of cause and manner of death. This laboratory is the result of meticulous planning. A large number of genetics lab staff participated in the design of the facility. As a cooperative effort, we had the privilege of working with architects from the Harris County Public Infrastructure Department, from the firm of Johnston LLC, and from the architects of Crime Laboratory Design. The contractor, Vaughn Construction, did an outstanding job to assure that the quality of the construction process met the high standards we demanded for this forensic lab. And now we proudly present to you our new Forensic Genetics Laboratory. In the summer of 2011, Harris County selected architecture and engineering firm Johnston LLC to be the lead designer of the new Forensic Genetics Laboratory. The new laboratory occupies approximately 15,100 square feet in the Texas Medical Center's John P. McGovern campus. The John P. McGovern campus was originally constructed as a bakery for the Nabisco Company. In 1949, it was described at its grand opening as the most modern bakery in the United States. The new Forensics Genetics Laboratory occupies what was once the bakery's train bay, where full-size train cars filled with flour and sugar were slowly rolled in, docked, and unloaded to supply the enormous baking factory. The primary function of the facility is the analysis of DNA evidence for Harris County criminal court cases. The 15,100 square foot facility is divided down in the middle in two distinct areas. Number one being administrative activities and the other being laboratory activities. Each area is further divided into zones for specialized activities arranged to optimize workflow. The entire laboratory is designed to accommodate rapidly emerging technologies in the human identification. Through the use of flexible design with permanent fixtures or furniture, the labs can be easily reconfigured to accommodate new equipment and processes without expensive renovations. An example of the flexibility is the full utility perimeter wall and full utility floor trench, which runs through the laboratory spaces. Unused outlets for power and data remain conveniently sealed until called upon for use in the future. Another example of the flexibility is the multi-use flex conference rooms that can be quickly reconfigured from small conference rooms into a very large meeting area or anything in between. The design of the new space respects and takes advantage of the simple, straightforward layout of the train bay and the materials used in its original construction. There is an abundance of natural light streaming in through the clear story windows along the roof above the space. Referred to as car shed monitors, these windows originally provided bright natural light for unloading the rail cars. Now with the addition of the numerous light fixtures, the entire space is lit softly and evenly with specialized lamps with color output that closely matches that of the sunlight. No matter how much or how little sunlight passes through the clear stories, the entire space remains illuminated in a constant natural way. The original Nabisco yellow clay brick was well preserved and are prevalent throughout the space. Areas where clay brick was found to be damaged or absent were repaired with salvaged Nabisco yellow bricks to preserve the facility's origins. In the non-laboratory areas, the train base original ceiling remains sloped and exposed as a key component connecting the old with the new. An underlayer of sprayed acoustical insulation was added to the exposed ceiling structure to help control sound and reduce external vibration. The non-laboratory areas also have a ceiling exposed to the structure. 
the exposed mechanical, electrical, and plumbing components are a part of the building's design. The lab areas have an acoustical ceiling which varies in height to take advantage of the volume within the space. The labs are designed to maintain a negative air pressure with all air regularly exhausted out of the building. The acoustical ceilings in the labs also play a big role in minimizing the volume of air the lab requires for the multiple HVAC air changes. The flooring is a rubber material from Nora which is soft on the feet for walking and standing for long periods. It requires no waxing and it is impervious to repeated bleaching that is done to prevent contamination. All of the critical equipment is on a UPS power source which in turn is backed up by an emergency generator. Both the UPS and the emergency generator are sized to accommodate anticipated future needs. By building a splendid facility like this, Harris County has created an environment for forensics DNA sciences to serve the community for many years to come. The Harris County Institute of Forensic Sciences provides service to approximately 65 law enforcement agencies within Harris County. The Forensic Genetics Laboratory receives over 350 cases per month composed of homicides, sexual assaults, robberies, assaults, and burglaries, as well as other types of cases. Approximately 50% of all cases received are property crimes, such as burglaries and thefts. Evidence personnel receive evidence Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. After hours and on weekends, a secure, refrigerated drop box is available. Officers may enter the evidence drop-off area after hours by using an intercom system that is linked to a constable from Harris County Precinct 1 at the Institute's location on Old Spanish Trail. The constable is available at that location 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. All evidence submitted must be properly labeled and sealed before submission and must be accompanied by a signed evidence submission form. Evidence is stored in a secure vault area and is transferred to analysts for testing through an automated pass-through locker system. All chain of custody at the Institute is maintained through an electronic barcoding system. Serology is the first step in the testing of items in the Forensic Genetics Laboratory. Forensic serology is the examination of evidence items for the presence of biological fluids and stains such as blood, semen, or saliva. Serological analysis also includes collecting DNA samples left by contact or touch DNA. During the testing process, evidence is opened, inventoried, and photographed. Each item is described in the case notes and the size, color, and general condition are noted. Analysts select samples for DNA testing as the case needs dictate. DNA testing is very sensitive and contamination control is a constant concern. To prevent contaminating evidence items with their own DNA, each analyst in the lab is always fully gowned. Each wears a lab coat, gloves, a face mask, a hair cover, and shoe covers. This protective gear also protects the analyst from biological hazards such as hepatitis or HIV viruses that might be present on the evidence. Semen and blood are identified during the serology testing phase. Preliminary presumptive tests are used to quickly characterize stains. These are simple color tests that indicate the possible presence of a body fluid. They're used to narrow down areas for further testing. Confirmation tests conclusively identify a body fluid stain. For semen, confirmation is done under a microscope where individual spermatozoa cells can be seen. For blood, confirmation is done by identifying the blood protein hemoglobin. Serologists cut portions of the positive stains for DNA testing. Drink bottles and cans, cigarette butts, body swaps from sexual assault victims, and even in some cases, partially eaten food are examined in order to find DNA from saliva. These items are swabbed at the areas of interest and the swabs are sent for DNA testing. Steering wheels, doorknobs, knife and gun handles, and money can be tested for touch or contact DNA. Each time an object is touched, cells are left behind. In many cases, enough cells are left for successful DNA testing. Contact DNA is also left by a person wearing an item. For example, a shirt or a hat left by a suspect at the scene of a robbery will be sampled to get DNA from the hat band of the hat and the armpits and neckline of the shirt. In each case, samples with potential DNA evidence are placed into small sealed test tubes, assigned unique barcodes, and stored frozen to await the next step in the DNA testing process. What is DNA? DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, macromolecules that serve as the building blocks of life. You might be more familiar with the term chromosomes, which are intact units of DNA. We inherit half of our chromosomes from each parent, producing a DNA combination unique to each person except identical twins, which share the same DNA. By examining areas of our DNA that vary greatly between individuals, 
the Forensic Genetics Laboratory is able to use it for identification purposes, linking together samples that share the same DNA characteristics. DNA is found in almost every cell in the body. When blood is found at a crime scene, a DNA profile from the blood can be compared and potentially linked to the DNA profile of a suspect or a complainant, typically from a mouth swab. DNA profiles can be generated from a wide array of samples, anything from touched objects with very small amounts of DNA to bloody objects recovered from the scene of an assault. In addition, the Forensic Genetics Laboratory can utilize the power of DNA to identify genetic relationships between people. This can be used to identify recovered human remains and it can be used to link a subject to a criminal paternity. Each month, thousands of samples are tested in the DNA operations area by a four-step process. The first step of the process is termed extraction. In this step, the DNA is removed from the sample and purified. This initial step utilizes chemicals and heat to disrupt the cells and release the DNA. The next step purifies the DNA from the cellular materials and contaminants that may have accompanied the sample. This is done on a sophisticated robot known as a Kaya Symphony from Kyogen. On the instrument, the DNA is bound to magnetic beads and with the beads held tightly by a magnet, impurities are simply washed away. Extraction is followed by quantitation, where the amount of DNA and the amount of human male DNA is determined. The male DNA is especially important in sexual assault cases. Next, a revolutionary process known as polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, copies or amplifies specific portions of recovered DNA. Using the PCR amplification process, millions of DNA copies are made from each of the 16 pre-selected portions of the DNA. The DNA code in the selected portions, termed loci, varies greatly from person to person. Taken together, the DNA code from multiple select loci provides the information to strongly link a perpetrator to a crime. The biochemical reactions of DNA quantitation and PCR amplification are assembled on a second precision robot, this one from the TCAN group. The TCAN robot tracks the location of hundreds of samples on the instrument by reading a unique barcode assigned to each sample. This automation greatly reduces the possibility of switching samples. The final step in testing is DNA separation and detection. The PCR amplified sample is placed onto an automated genetic analyzer known as an ABI 3130XL from Life Technologies Corporation. This device utilizes electrical current to separate the DNA copies based on their length. Short DNA copies are detected by the instrument first, while larger copies are detected later. In this way, recording the time of detection of each set of copies, the final test result is obtained, a complete DNA profile. The instrument produces a chart, known as an electrophorogram, to display the DNA profile of each sample. DNA analysts compare the DNA profiles from each sample in a case and make comparisons between the profiles from evidence and those from victims or suspects in each case. The DNA analyst will then prepare a laboratory report which is reviewed by at least one other DNA analyst prior to release to the law enforcement agency that submitted the evidence. The report describes the results and conclusions of the DNA tests. It can be used to assist an investigation by indicating whether blood or semen was detected and whether the DNA from evidence samples provide links to DNA from the victim or the suspect in each case. The tests can link a suspect to a crime or, equally important, a non-match can divert attention away from a suspect. Coincidental matches can be as rare as 1 in 1 quintillion. That's a 1 with 18 zeros. The frequency of a coincidental match, or obtaining the recovered evidence profile by chance, is provided each time a link or match is reported. The report may be used in a trial to provide scientific information on a case. Testimony given by the DNA analyst who authored the report may assist the jury in the determination of innocence or guilt. In some situations, no suspect is identified prior to DNA testing of the evidence. In that case, the DNA profile from the unknown perpetrator can be entered into a national DNA database known as the Combined DNA Index System, or CODIS. The CODIS computer database rapidly compares the DNA profiles of millions of previously convicted offenders to the profiles of DNA recovered from crime scenes. When the computer finds a match in the database, the name and other identifying information is provided to law enforcement agencies for further investigation. To date, the HCIFS Forensic Genetics Laboratory has made more than 5,000 CODIS matches, including more than 2,800 matches to a convicted offender. That's more than any other lab in Texas and among the leaders nationwide. CODIS can also be used to identify missing persons by linking DNA from recovered remains to DNA provided by families with missing members. 
It is the mission of the Forensic Genetics Laboratory to provide the criminal justice community with the highest quality, state-of-the-art DNA testing services. To meet this mission, the laboratory is accredited under the rigorous international program of the American Society of Crime Laboratory Directors Laboratory Accreditation Board to ISO 17025 accreditation standards. We strive to meet the highest quality standards while maintaining no backlog. The Institute is very grateful for the vigorous support of Harris County Judge Emmett, Commissioners Lee, Mormon, Raddick, and Cagle, the Harris County Sheriff's Office, and the Harris County District Attorney's Office, as well as the member institutions and the executive staff of the Texas Medical Center. Without their efforts, we would not be here today. Most of all, I want to acknowledge and commend the talented and dedicated professional staff of the Forensic Genetics Laboratory, the Harris County Institute of Forensic Sciences, where science serves justice rapidly, reliably, and effectively.